Good morning. Good morning. Happy Easter and welcome to St. Charles. If you are with us on Zoom, please remain muted during the service except when we pray the Lord's Prayer and exchange peace with one another. We celebrate with great joy the resurrection of the Lord Jesus. He who lives forever shares his life with the baptized. Let us rejoice and be glad on this day that the Lord has made. Please take a moment to turn to those around you, say hello and greet one another. Please stand and join in our gathering song. Jesus Christ is risen today. Alleluia. Our triumphant holy. Oh, 
the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Oh, I'm sorry. Let's first of all raise our voices in praise as we sing the Gloria. All right. <laughs> God in the highest and on earth, peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O oh God Almighty, Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us, you take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer, you are seated. Father, have mercy on us. Let us pray. O oh God, who on this day, through your only begotten Son, have conquered death and unlocked for us the path to eternity, grant, we pray, that we who keep the solemnity of the Lord's resurrection may, through the renewal brought by your Spirit, rise up in the light of life. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter proceeded to speak and said, you know what has happened all over Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John preached, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power. He went about doing good and healing all those oppressed by the devil for God was with him. We are witnesses of all that he did, both in the country, both in the country of the Jews and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. This man God raised on the third day and granted that he be visible, not to all the people, 
but to us, the witnesses chosen by God in advance, who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commissioned us to preach to the people and testify that he is the one appointed by God as judge of the living and the dead. To him, all the prophets, all the prophets bear witness that everyone who believe in him will receive forgiveness of sins through his name. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice, let us rejoice. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. Give thanks to the Lord for He is good, for His mercy endures Declare the works of the Lord. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice, let us rejoice. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. The stone which the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. By the Lord has this been done. It is wonderful in our eyes. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice. Let us rejoice. Rejoice and be A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Colossians. Brothers and sisters, if then you were raised with Christ, seek what is above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Think of what is above, not of what is on earth. For you have died and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, your life, appears, then you too will appear with him in glory. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you. 
more. Let the flame of Christ be adored. Sound the trumpet's joyful heart's praise. Jesus Christ has risen today. Alleluia. Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. At daybreak on the first day of the week, the women who had come from Galilee with Jesus took the spices that they had prepared and they went to the tomb. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb, but when they entered, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. While they were puzzling over this, behold, two men in dazzling garments appeared to them. They were terrified and bowed their faces to the ground. They said to them, why do you seek the living among the dead? He is not here, but has been raised. Remember what he said to you while he was still in Galilee, that the Son of Man must be handed over to sinners and be crucified and rise on the third day. And they remembered his words. Then they returned from the tomb and announced all these things to the eleven and to all the others. The women were Mary Magdalene, Joanna, and Mary, the mother of James. The others who accompanied them also told this to the apostles, but their story seemed like nonsense and they did not believe them. But Peter got up and ran to the tomb, bent down and saw the burial clothes alone. Then he went home amazed at what had happened. The Gospel of the Lord. May you leave behind you a whole string of empty tombs. That's my Easter greeting to you. It wasn't original with me. I stole it from somebody, but it's the best, perhaps the best Easter greeting. May you live, leave behind you a whole string of empty tombs. Because the resurrection of Jesus Christ is not a way to how, about how to live. It's not about how to live. It's about how to live again and again and again and again. Because in our gospel, we have Jesus raised up from his crucifixion, has been turned by God into a resurrection. And that is precisely what Jesus promises to us. If we will live deeply in the faith in the resurrection, that our crucifixions, will be turned into resurrections. Our many graves will be opened. And so we will be able to live again and again and again, and we will rise from our many graves again and again and again, and we will leave behind us a whole string of empty tombs. And so in our gospel, we can see how this, we can begin to see how this is true, and how we can begin to deepen our faith in the resurrection of Jesus Christ. So what we're talking about when we talk about God raising up Jesus from the dead and turning his crucifixions into resurrections, we have a big religious word for it, redemption. But here's the problem, is that we can misunderstand redemption, and that's possibly because we're Americans. When we hear that Jesus is always working within the hearts of everyone everywhere at all the time to turn their resurrections into or their crucifixions into resurrections. We contend maybe as Americans to say, oh, well, that means that Jesus is going to fix everything. 
So, you know, let me tell you, Jesus, I've got some problems and difficulties. This illness has touched my life and some people have betrayed me and I've had some financial difficulties. And so I want you to fix those. But the trouble is that redemption doesn't mean fixing because all we have to do is look at the gospel and we can see that Jesus was not fixed. God didn't fix Jesus because fixing things means like if I said to Leaf, if I said Leaf, you know, there's a light bulb up there that's out, and there's actually two of them that are out. And I said, Leaf, will you fix those two? And then what he could do is go into some storeroom somewhere in the church, and he would pick out two light bulbs that are just exactly like the ones in there, and he would plug them in, and he would fix it. And the thing about fixing is that it would be exactly like it was before. It would be 100% what it was before, and nobody would even know that, they, that there was any difference between the light bulb that's what fixing is about. But Jesus is not fixed. The crucified Jesus is not fixed because we can see right from the gospel that Mag Mary Magdalene is there. And Mary Magdalene is the woman who knows Jesus better than any other woman besides his mother. And she doesn't recognize him at first. So something has changed. Jesus is the same, but Jesus is also different. And so what's different is that Jesus has been transformed. There has been transformation, not fixed, not fixed. He's not back exactly like he was before. And the other way we know that is because he still has the wounds in his hands and in his side. So Jesus didn't get fixed. Jesus got transformed. And so the resurrection is about transformation. It's about how God changes evil into good. It's about how things are healed. Jesus has his wounds, but they're wounds that are healed. They're wounds that have been transformed. And so the resurrection is about how God can change our crucifixions into resurrections time after time after time. But we are still going to have our wounds. The wounds are going to be there. They're not going to be fixed. They'll be there, but they'll be healed and they'll be transformed. And the glory of God will shine out of our wounds. And our wounds will be our glory, just as the glory of Jesus is his wounds. But we will not be fixed. A man and a woman have been married for 20 years. And let's say they suffer the tragedy of divorce. And so they have to be saying to themselves, what happened? To that 20 years what about that 20 years i lived those 20 years like they were worth a life and now that whole part of my life what happened to it do we really think there's any fix for that there's no way to fix that there's no way to go into some storeroom in the church of jesus christ and find uh, a replaceable part for the 20 years of their lives that they feel have now they don't know what happened to them there's no way to pull out a, a replaceable part for their divorce and to plug it in and it will be fixed there's no fix for that but it can be transformed it can be redeemed it can be healed it can be the evil can be changed into good because that's what the res that's what redemption is about is how god and only god seriously can change evil into good god can change crucifixions into resurrection you and i can't we can cooperate with it but we can't do it but the power of god can do it the power of the resurrected jesus christ can turn our crucifixions into resurrections, but they're not healed. We're going to have the wounds. But they can be, but they can be healed and transformed, and the evil can be turned into good. The young woman, nowadays a girl, young boy, a girl nowadays, they're online so much, and our friends are online. And somebody, somebody starts a rumor about you and trashes your whole reputation trashes it and all your friends think that you're a terrible person and they leave you well there's no fix for that there's no way for somebody to go into a storeroom in the church and take out a, the piece of your heart that's broken and plug it into your broken heart so you don't feel it anymore so that like it's like it never happened 
There's no way to heal that. I mean, there's no way to fix that. But there is a way for that to be redeemed. There's a way for that to be healed and transformed. There's a way for the evil of that to be changed into good. And one of the things that's so hard for young people is, of course, that they, something happens that they think they can't live through it. You think they'll die from it. They feel like they've died before they died. But then those of us who are, you know, we've been through the spin cycle once or twice. We know, oh no, wait a while. Yeah, you're going to live through it. And not only will you live through it, but it may take a while. It may take years. It may take a decade. But you will begin to see how God is able to turn, to begin to turn the evil, to begin to turn it and turn it and turn it until you say, well, okay, but some good came out of that. Look what, I, look what I've made myself to be in response to that. I'm a better person now than I was before. And God took that evil and began to turn it and change it into some good. And you know what? I like the person that I am now. I don't like what happened to me, but I like the person that I've been transformed into because I had to deal with it in faith in God and in faith in Jesus Christ and to forgive and to love and to work through it. And eventually we will say, yes, it was evil, but God has used it for some good. It has been transformed. It has been healed. So let's try to think of the worst case that we can think of. Let's say someone is abused by a parent or a relative or by, God forbid, a priest of God, that they have been abused or some woman has been assaulted, or some young woman has, some girl, young, young woman has been assaulted. Well, there's, do we really think there's a fix for that? Do we really think that there's some place in the church that we can go and get the replaceable part for their soul that has been twisted and torn and broken and hurt? Do we really think there's some replaceable part that can be plugged in and it will be fixed like it never happened? There's no fix for that. But there is redemption for that. There is nothing that cannot be redeemed by God. By the power of God, anything can be redeemed. There is no death that God cannot bring life from. That's what the resurrection tells us and what it promises us. That there is no death that God cannot bring life from. But what Jesus, what the resurrected Jesus brings to us is redemption which is the miraculous ability to change evil into good. And we won't even, we won't know how it happens. We won't be able to do it ourselves. We can cooperate with it, but we won't be able to do it ourselves. But it will mysteriously happen because that's what Jesus is doing in the lives and the hearts of all people all the time. Some people think that Jesus is just, what God and Jesus are doing is they're just keep track, keeping track of what we're doing wrong. And what we're doing right, wrong, what kind of a God would that be? No, what Jesus is doing, keep it, Jesus notices what we do right and wrong. But what Jesus is always doing is working in whatever has gone wrong to reverse the effects so that what was done for evil can be turned to good. Jesus works in everything, all of the evil and all that has gone wrong to reverse it to heal it, to transform it, so that through the miraculous power of God, what was done for evil can be turned into good. And so we celebrate on Easter every time. We celebrate the fact that there is nothing that cannot be redeemed by God. There is no crucifixion that cannot be redeemed by God. None of the crucifixions of our lives, there is not one, that can't be redeemed by God. And so we celebrate Easter joy. But what Easter joy? We need to approach Easter joy like a learner. It's not like, woohoo, happiness kind of joy. That's, that's dependent on circumstances. We need to approach it like a learner and say, what is this joy of Jesus that Jesus has, what that the resurrected Jesus has that we share in? Because that joy is more like the joy that we don't ever have to live anymore as if 
Any of the deaths that touch us are the last word. We get to live so that fear of losing ourselves, fear of some sort of death that we, it doesn't have to be the driving force of our lives anymore. It's the joy that God always has the last word. It's like the little girl who went to, she went to uh, Sunday school and she came back home and her mother said, well, what did you learn, dear? And she says, well, we learned that Jesus was, they made him dead with nails in his hands. But ha-ha, he got up again. Ha-ha, he got up again. And so death never has the last word. Evil never has the last word. There's no end to things that God can't bring a start from. There's no death that God cannot bring life from. God always has the last word. Ha ha. That little girl knew what she was talking about. And that's the joy of the resurrection. And it takes us a while to learn it. It takes us a lifetime how to learn it. But more and more we learn to live in the depths of our faith in that resurrection, is that our crucifixions can be turned into resurrections and that nobody has the last word but God. And there is no death that God cannot bring life out of. Aha, he got up again. And so that's why I say, as, I, as we continue and we will gather around the altar, that's why I say that maybe the best Easter greeting is, May you leave behind a whole string of empty tombs. I invite you now to turn on your electric candles. The closest thing to a candle we could do right now. You can remain seated. Dear people of God, through the Paschal mystery, we have been buried with Christ in baptism so that we may rise with him to a new transformed life. And so let us now renew the promises that we made and that our loved ones made for us at our baptism to live in the freedom of the daughters of God and of the sons of God. Do you reject sin so as to live in the freedom of God's children? Okay, let me ask that one more time and we're so we can get our, everybody ask a response at the same time. Do you reject sin so as to live in the freedom of God's children? I do. And do you reject the glamour of evil and refuse to be mastered by sin? I do. And do you reject Satan and, and the father of lies and all of the empty promises of evil? I do. And do you believe in God the Father Almighty, the creator of heaven and of earth. And do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, was crucified, died, and was buried, rose from the dead, and is now seated at the right hand of the Father? Thank you. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? God, all loving and compassionate, has given us new birth by water and the Holy Spirit. May we journey in this Holy Spirit to complete unity and peace. And we pray this through Christ our Lord. When we are baptized, baptism is not just, we had five children baptized last night here. 
And baptism is not simply about getting dunked in some water. It's about the beginning of a baptismal life. It's about the, begin the beginning of living a baptismal life where our worst self, we're always pushing our worst self down into the baptismal water for it to drown. And then trusting God to raise up our best self time after time after time. That's what living the baptismal life is like. And so we remember, we remember that now. Springs of water as he said, in joy and firm faith, let us bring our petitions before our God. Our response is, O oh God, hear our prayer. O oh God, hear our prayer. That the power of the resurrection fill the church, empowering each person to spread the good news of the risen Christ. We pray. O oh God, oh God, hear our prayer. Hear our prayer that the newly confirmed and baptized enjoy the supportive care of St. Charles parishioners and the entire church and the entire church community. We pray. Oh God, hear our prayer. That Christians throughout the world, especially those in countries antagonistic to Christianity may celebrate this holy feast in safety. We pray. O oh God, hear our prayer. That the peace of the risen Christ, which surpasses all understanding, wash over our nation and world, bringing unity and understanding. We pray. O oh God, hear our prayer. That the God of creation, who found it very good, bless us and help us increase our efforts 
to restore, protect, and enjoy our natural world, we pray. Oh God. God, hear our prayer. That those crushed by sickness, addiction, violence, racism, depression, or grief, especially Tomasa Aiken, Hinoski Pilius, and Tina Pilius, may rise to new life in the risen Christ, we pray. Oh God, hear our prayers. That the risen Christ who suffered death out of love for us, renew our parish this Easter and give us an ever greater share of the spirit, we pray. Oh God, hear our prayer. God of glory and of might, at the empty tomb, Mary Magdalene is asked, why do you search for the living among the dead? Hear our prayers, that in our words and actions, we may proclaim Jesus Christ from the dead to all that we encounter through Christ our Lord. Amen. Mm -hmm. days our world was broken, the Lord of life lay dead. Take up your cross, he told us, who followed where he led. Would we said was empty, his broken body gone. Who could believe their story? The dead do not arrive. Yet he walks among Christ. 
Christ is Lord. The risen Christ is Lord. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God. The Almighty Father. Amen. Exultant with Paschal gladness, O Lord, we offer the sacrifice by which your church is wondrously reborn and transformed, healed and nourished through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. With Lift up your hearts. Lift up the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But on this day, above all, to praise you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying, he has destroyed our death. And by rising, he has restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. <laughs> are indeed holy and to be glorified, O God, who love the human race and who always walk with us on the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son present in our midst when we are gathered by his love and when, as once for the disciples, so now for us, he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father most merciful, we ask that you send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread and said the blessing. He broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. And in a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, gave you thanks, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, so that sins may be forgiven. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Savior, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have seated at your right hand, 
we proclaim the work of your love until he comes again. And we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. Look with favor on the offering of your church in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us. And granted by the power of the spirit of your love, we may be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your son in whose body and blood we have communion. Bring your church, O Lord, to perfect faith and love together with Francis our Pope and Alexander our Bishop with all of the bishops and priests and deacons and the entire people everywhere that you have made your own. Open our eyes to the needs of our brothers and sisters. Inspire in us words and actions to comfort those who labor and who are burdened. Make us to serve them truly after the example of Christ and at his command. And may your church stand as a living witness to truth and to freedom, to peace and to justice, that all people may be raised up to a new hope. And remember our brothers and our sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ and all of the dead whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your own face and in the resurrection, give to them the fullness of life and grant also to us when our earthly pilgrimage is done, that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever there in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, with the Apostles and the Martyrs, with St. Charles, and with all of the saints, we shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. invite those at home to on Zoom to unmute at this time. And at the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, Father who art in who heaven, heaven hallowed be thy, thy name. name. Thy kingdom, thy kingdom come, come. Thy will be done, done on earth as, as it is in heaven. heaven. Give, give us this day our daily bread, bread and forgive, and forgive us, our us our trespasses as, as we, we forgive, forgive those who trespass, trespass against, against us. us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ, for the kingdom and the power, the power and the, the glory, glory are yours, now, now and, forever. and forever. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not upon our sins, look instead upon the faith of your church and graciously grant to her peace Hi. and unity in accordance with your will who sure. live and reign forever and ever. And ever, amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us peace, offer everybody. one another sign of peace. Peace, peace. peace everybody. JD. Yeah. Peace be with you. Hi, Samantha. Peace be with you. Hi, peace be with you. Hi, Angie. Peace be with you, Angie. Mary down there. Peace be with you. Notice I didn't hit you with water. Look at easy on you guys.
the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Happy are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. You are welcome to come forward to receive communion or a blessing. If, you, if you'd prefer a blessing, as you come forward, just place your hands across your chest and you'll receive a blessing. We ask you to approach by the two near side aisles, not the center, but the two near side aisles, and then exit to the far side. And beginning with the outside sections moving in. that was slain to receive honor and glory worthy are the ones who believe to receive the goodness of God worthy are you O Paschal Lamb wisdom and strength Long now to you, you lay down your life and died upon the cross. We become a people of hope. Worthy is the Lamb that was slain. By conquering death and rising to do life, we become a people of praise. Worthy is the Lamb that was slain to receive honor and glory. Worthy are the ones who of God. Worthy are 
Let us pray. Look upon your church, O oh God, with unfailing love and favor, so that renewed by the Easter mysteries, she may come to the glory of the resurrection through Christ our Lord. Please be seated for our announcements. Good morning. Happy Easter to all of you. Uh, my name is Leif Kerwald, uh, pastoral coordinator here at St. Charles. Uh, a really warm welcome uh, to all of you who are visiting, uh, to those of you who are returning, uh, for those of you who are um, here for the first time. So uh, thank you so much for being with us. A couple of words of thanks. Uh, our Easter celebration doesn't just happen. Uh, if you look around our space, you can see it beautifully decorated and in a completely different decoration if you were with us even just three days ago for Holy Thursday, let alone last Sunday for Palm Sunday. So. Our decorators have really done an extraordinary job and I'd like you to uh, acknowledge them. I'd also like to point out that uh, our musicians were here last night till about 11 p.m. for our Easter vigil and back here bright and early this morning to lead us in song. So please. Uh, acknowledge them as well. And there are many, many others who have put in countless hours to help us uh, celebrate this liturgy as well as throughout Holy Week, uh, um, lectors, readers, altar servers, Eucharistic ministers, ushers, uh, hospitality, uh, projection and Zoom. How about a hand for Rio for keeping us uh, on our mind? A special thank you to, uh, of course, to um, Father Jerry for leading us and presiding and preaching uh, with us. So please, Jerry, thank you. I want to acknowledge the person who I consider our, our history and wisdom keeper as we worship year in and year out. Uh, so Sister Phyllis, we are so grateful uh, to you. Thank you. Take a moment and try to locate that tea light, that little uh, candle light that you were given. Uh, and, um, I, I want to say two things about that. Number one, it's yours if you want it. But if you don't want it, try to find one of those baskets as you go out and put it there. That saves me the trouble of having to find it in your pew. So uh, whatever you do, take it out of your pew. Uh, also, uh, as you leave, I invite you to take a parish bulletin with you that contains all the parish news. And you may have noticed uh, right in the middle, in the back there, a wooden box that has the word donations on it. Funny thing. You know what that means. And uh, we, did, we did not take up a collection, but that does not mean we're interested in, in your support. Uh, so, so we invite you to contribute there. Um, and uh, turns out I am looking for someone to replace a couple of light bulbs. No, just, <laughs> just kidding. Um. <laughs> Jerry, let's just check in to sure they were listening uh, to you. Okay. Uh, and I know there are a lot of young people here who have high anticipation for what's coming next. And Mary is going to tell us about that. We have an Easter egg hunt. It is, it will begin right after church is over. We will wait to start till all of our friends that are under 12 are outside. 
There is going to be a section for ages one to four, and then a section for older kids. One to four will start first, and I'm going to say it now so everybody hears it, and I'll say it again outside. If you are one to four years old, your Easter eggs are yellow and orange. And then there are different color eggs for all of the older kids. And oh yeah, where is the Easter egg hunt, right? Because it looks a little different. When you walk outside of the church and you turn right where you normally go for coffee and donuts, there is a fence that lets you into the courtyard. There are two pink flower balloons on that fence. Wait at that fence. Do not go through until I tell you to. Thank you. I, I just one more thing. Sorry, I heard you groan that you have to be twelve or under, and uh, so for those of you who aren't, uh, we do have coffee and donuts in the Commons. Uh, so please uh, join us there. And you'll find your way uh, out the north door um, and then go east and follow the parade. And I would like to thank Leaf for everything he does for the yes. parish. Yes. Go Leaf. I'd just like to say before I dismiss you that as a special uh, reward to our musicians who were here so late last night and then they're back again, we have promised to add another zero to their salaries. Yes. So please stand. Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Go forth in peace, the Mass is ended. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks, Thanks to God. Alleluia, alleluia. God, see the morning is new. Rise from your sleeping and run to the tomb. Come and see, come and see, he is alive. A grave that is empty, a promise fulfilled. God who is with us is here with us still. He is here, he is here, he is alive. Hallelujah, love is alive, conquer the grave and you feed it tonight. Hallelujah, love is alive, the sun has arisen for all. Your people sing hallelujah. People of God, let your fear fall away. Chains have been broken, abandon your shame. Lift your hearts, lift your hearts, he is alive. Here now is mercy embracing your soul. Hear the fulfillment that once was foretold. He is true, he is true, he is alive. Hallelujah. Love is alive, conquered the grave and defeated the night. Hallelujah, love is alive, the sun has arisen for all. Your people sing hallelujah. People of God now rejoicing in Christ. Carry your joy to the darkness of night. Tell the world, tell the world, he is alive. Hear the good news of this glorious day. Every heart singing as heaven proclaims he is Lord.